Hello everyone, let me just find the video. Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone on this Thursday? I'm happy to report that hmm, um, we're back in Gladstone. I'm feeling warm again, which is excellent. Um, I love Gladstone. Uh, I'm going to be checking what that content was. Um, and here we go. You are looking at my hair. It is recently washed though, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you teaching it, Yes, I am now teaching. Okay, there we go. And we are there. Woo! Say hello, everyone. Um, so tonight we've got a few choices. Well, we don't have that many, but um, we've designed quite a few stamps. And if you were fortunate enough to get to the Melbourne Craft Show, you would have seen them. If you were unable to, I completely understand. Uh, we're going to be using them throughout our mixed media classes in like the next month or in the retreat and a few other places. So we've got this heart one here that's new and I thought this would be really cool to try out because we can use it as like an outline that we can cut around. Um, and I'm up for fussy cutting hearts because they're not too difficult, which is my reasoning. And then we also have this piece of bubble vellum. And then we have two stencils that we haven't properly released yet either, which is this one here, this corrugated, and this hexacorn, or almost honeycomb. Here's the problem. I know this almost honeycomb. Oh, hello, Pam. Oh, it was great to see you too. Hello, Tash. Uh, so I know this almost honeycomb will match our piece of vellum. And our stamp we're going to use. However, I do like this stencil. Well, I don't think like really sums it up. I love the stencil. I haven't even used it yet. And I know I'm going to love it. So, do we go with the honeycomb or the checker plate? Or a bit of both. Why don't you put that down and do that over the top? Oh, uh, we've already done that. It seems oh, very complicated. Hello, Pam. Hello, Di. Hello, Tash. Hello, Di. Have you only just started? Yes. So you couldn't hear it when she said, so what would you like to talk about? And I told her very loudly that she needed to stop talking and get dressed. Okay. In the well, bathroom. Right, right. Um, P.S. I'm live and this is my time. Yes. So. Hello, everybody. I'm chalking me out. You know, the ladies and I had this conversation in one of my watercolour classes about how there are different rules for the two different types of live classes yeah, we I'm do. Not, out here in your class. not get it? I'm That's not exactly what happens. Yeah, well, it's not my fault you play up really more fast. I can check her. Check her. it is. I like it. Hello, Karis and Heather and Cheryl and Pam and Heather. I think I said hello to Heather. I don't know. Check it is. Right, let's get started. So we've got colours we need to choose. And I think we're going to do something funky with the heart. Okay. We've just got to get it right. So first of all, we need to make a background. So... Let's see, what colour combos could we do? We could do this desert. I reckon desert, and where's that orange? And we could chuck teal in. Mm, oh. We could go for a navy. A lavender and desert. Heart stamp. Yeah, see, we're going to use the heart stamp tonight. I know that's a definite. What do you reckon? I do have chopsticks that I got from a restaurant. 
And yes, I paid extra for them. I'm gonna go stealing collage stuff. I ask venues before taking this stuff. And I pay for it. Um Broken that one there. We will be needing that though. And where's my white tube? I did chuck white in here. Oh, look, it's right there. White. Okay, so uh, now that you know about my chopsticks, what do we think about this one? I know Pam will be for it, so I'm not going to ask Pam because Pam loves purple. But how does everyone else feel about the color palette? Yeah, see, saving things is important. I even have my boarding pass from the airplane that I think I'm going to use on the weekend to do an artwork because it'll be the first time I'm going to paint for myself in two months I worked out. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. Um... Or do we chuck in skin colour and take out desert? These are the problems of the 21st century that we really have to consider. Colour palettes, Dad. Colour. Bonza. Bonza. Right. Well, parents are converted, by the way, to Bonza. Okay. Let's, let's try these out for size. You know what? I think we could have this one, but it might just, we'll put it out just in case, and we're going to put out our, oh, that's going to be adding another, we'll put out our, oh, barely got any gold glitter left, buying some more of that, but oh, don't worry, I already did, ah! we're putting out our gold glitter, all right, there we go. Why am I keeping an empty tube? I think like that tube got switched out of the collage tub. Mm. Anyway, right. Let's get started, shall we? So we've got ourselves our bits and pieces. So let's pull out. I feel like if we put three blobs of our desert down. You know, for a colour that I was pretty home home about, we're going to use it first up. I know. Oh, hello, Diane. So we're just going to come in and... Ooh, we're going to spread that one out. I don't like the... Um, I like the colours of the Jane Davenport. I will say that. However, I don't like the sort of tube because the way that I hold a tube and try and handle it, I always squeeze a little bit too much out. I do prefer these ones here and... Um, this one and uh, Motma, just because they're just a little bit bigger, it's easier to control the flow, I find. But um, that's just me. I, I I do struggle with the Jane Davenport ones, which is why we don't use all of their colours in classes, just because, um, like, it's important to understand that I don't want to waste paint and I think it's a really good practice to get into um, always not to waste paint and try and use every skerrick because it's like someone has gone to a great deal of length to make that acrylic paint in that tube and it's a waste if you waste it so yeah. So we're just getting that down as like the first little layer. I'm not too worried if we see white. I'm just going to come and rinse the paint off that one. Now we did do that with a dry brush just to get, so we wanted, I did it with a dry brush because I wanted to see my brush strokes and the difference between the colours. But as you can see, when I run my finger on it, I barely get any paint because I've spread the paint as much as possible. I changed up for one more just Hello Diane G and the reason why we spread the paint as much as possible is A it dries fast and then B um it means that we can get more of the texture of our paper in there because as you can see this one these pages here have been cold pressed which means that we get texture on this paper which is pretty cool the fact that you can see where the plate has been to press the paper in. Well, I think it is. 
Hello Kelly. It's like the uh, machine signature. Okay. And then let's come in. I think we might do these in our blue. Well, our police blue from the Art by Marlene collection. Let's just squeeze a bit of that out. You can use a blending brush for this. I am going to use a sponge. Just because uh, our blending brushes are just currently getting a bit of TLC from Melbourne because um, after one of the classes, something happened. Yeah. Anyway, it's actually my fault. So, but yeah, so we're going to use a sponge tonight, but you guys can use a <coughs> blending brush. And then what we might come and do... We always seem to go for the corner and edges, but we could just come in and do like an all over pattern because this should fit in each other if I've done this correctly. I did draw this or well, drew it. So let's see if I've done my job correctly. Well, hello, Kelly and Debbie and Diane. I don't know if I've said hello to everyone. I'm truly sorry if I haven't said hello to you. Hello. If I have not. Uh, and quickly, while we are doing our usual sponging technique, if your device is playing up, we are streaming this in two places. We're streaming it on Facebook in our Creative Family group and on my YouTube channel. So if your device for some reason has decided to play up on one of the platforms, you can hop over to the other one. I completely understand um, in Gladstone here, we find that Facebook works better on my dad's desktop, which is the one that we scribe on, um, which is why a lot of the stuff is Facebook based for those for mom's classes. And but down when I lived in Brisbane in my Brisbane apartment, um, I could barely get Facebook to work. I had to use YouTube. So look at that. I told you I was going to love this stencil. Hello, Bronnie. See, look, I, I love it. I didn't even use it and I knew I was going to love it. Right, let's come and line these up. And oh, my God. Am I good or am I good? Look at that. We've got that aligned. We can come in and do some more. There's only think one thing I think better than a mandala stencil and a script stamp. And that is abstract patterns that work perfectly. I'm sold. I think this is my favourite stencil. We don't need any more stencils. We have this one. Just look at it, mate. Hold up, we do need a bit more blue. And no, I still haven't managed to find, I think my palette is still in the freezer because I got really into trying to finish off uh, my succulents painting back in April and then stuff hit the fan and work and all the rest of it and life. Well, I don't really remember a lot after April. Well, that one. 
uh, I don't know where the time went, so I'm pretty sure my palette is still in the freezer, which is why we're using the Messy Man as a palette, and we have been for months, because yeah, once again, I'm pretty sure it's there, it's the last place I saw it, in the pastry drawer, in a clippy bag, I can guarantee it's probably there, but yeah. And There we go. We should look at that. We've got some paint on there. Woo! I'm actually quite happy with that. We could just stick a word there. And if this was a page, you stick a photo here and a photo here, and you'd have like a frame and some doodling, and voila, be finished. But we might actually add some doodling now while we're on the topic. Let's see. What are we thinking? We've got hearts and bubbles to go with this. So, wait, oh, evening, Karen. I, we're going to add the doodling now because I always say we're going to add it after we do all the painting and then end up trying to, having to do it over a wet layer of paint. Never really works as well as I want it to. So, we're going to come in and what we might do, just try and do like a multi line one. And this is going to give us a frame to work from the beginning. So, so a good point where some pages could do with a bit of uh, gumption, I think the word is. Nope. I'll have it eventually. So we've got that there already. And then Just draw some mini hearts around it. Sorry, I'm trying to do it something like you can see it, but I feel like I'm holding it at the wrong angle. You know, they are what they are. They're not perfect. And then oh, we need one more. So we've got those ones. Uh, I've got the spare piece of watercolor paper. Yeah, I'm gonna come in. 
and do this. So we're just going to grab, just going to put out a bit of this purple paint. Now remembering my purple paint is a little bit gunky because this tube is old and the paint's starting to go off. But we um, work with it to remix it because um, it's currently in step one of going off. It just it parts. It also happens if you're in a high humidity place and you don't use the paint very often. It starts to um, split. So, yeah. And go gunky, which is where we're at. Just draw lines. Oh, hello, Cheryl. And there we go. Move. And as you can see, it just kind of makes a bit more of an edge. I think it's kind of cool. Hmm. Might have been better if we did it that way. But I don't know. It's last class. I will have to catch up if we did it tonight. <laughs> May I ask when the card class is on? Thanks. Oh, okay. Um, no, that's okay, um, Cheryl. Uh, so the card class is on at 7 p.m. on Saturday night in the uh, subscription group. I don't know which one. I believe we're still in the August one. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we've got that bit there done so far. And now, where's this piece here? So we are going to do our hearts out of our vellum, but I do want just a few out of like another piece of watercolour just to give it them some body. Oh, that's okay. Uh, um, I assume that's what it was. I'm terrible at English myself. Um, so, like, I just want... I reckon a few that are just a bit of purple, like with an inked edge of this bit, just to kind of really get them matching in with the bubble one. Uh, like to kind of link the hearts in with the colour palette and all the rest of it, because if we do all of them out of the bubble, it might seem a bit odd. And we're going to do something fancy with the bubble, which we might do first, because that's actually going to take time to dry now that I remember it. But what we want to do is we want to stamp these with a um we want to stamp these um with glossy accents i want to see how this goes so let me just grab the glossy accents make sure i don't need to pin it i do need to pin it All right. 
Oh, this is actually not a pen, it's a sewing needle. I do keep a few on hand so that if I have to fix up a canvas, I do. Yeah, I want to see how this goes. So I'm going to do a pretty thick layer of glossy accents. I want to see what the effect is. If it's like paint or ink. Well, we won't need to press too hard because we've got a nice coverage. Yeah. So I moved it a fair bit so it's a bit spready. So let's try again. Okay. Mm. I don't know if that one there had enough. It has a bit more of a ringlet to it. Let's try and get this correct. I just want to see if this works A and then B I figured another way to stop vellum from creeping in on itself would be to try and strengthen it I guess with a sealer on top and a classic sealer is glue. So if we can get it to seal the edge of our vellum, when we stick it on, we should have less trouble with it going together, you know what I mean? Like, well that's my aim at least. I don't know how... it's going to be. Alright. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Do you reckon we might do another two hearts? Just in case we lose some of the fussy cutting. And then what we might come and do. So we've got them like this so far. But I want to see what happens, the difference between just doing the outline and the full inside. So we're going to choose the ones that have a bit more of a, um, a dodgier outside. Because I think those won't work as well as like this one here has got a really good outside bit to it. Like it's fully coverage. Where this one here has got a few holy bits and it's not as thick. So if we come and do those ones... And fill it in just how like you would go over um, a piece of chipboard to get it glossy, you know? Making sure to include the edge as well so that it doesn't look odd when we cut it out. No holes. No holes. Okay. And then if we come up and we do this one here, I am just spinning it around so that I don't get the glue on my hand. As much as I love having paint on myself, um, I call it an occupation hazard. It's kind of like a safety blanket. Uh, it's glue on arm. Um, mm, it does hurt because you've got arm hairs. Just a heads up. So okay, and then there's that one. Um, I'm not going to lift this up while I do this, just because. It's just a little bit delicate and I don't have the great amount of coordination so I'll lift it up once I'm done to show you guys. Okay. So I've done a few that are full gloss as you can see and then there's so there's four that are full gloss and three that are just outlines. So we'll see how that goes. We're gonna let that oh there's a hole in that one. We're gonna let those dry. So we're just gonna set that off to one side and then 
that was a bit of a mistake. And I can't look at glue. And I'll have hot sin. And we're going to do it in just a few spots. around the page. I think we might do five overall. And make sure to stamp off any extra. There we go. Put the lid back on that one, put it up to that side, and then so there's three there, and there's the two up there. So we're going to put that to one side as well and let that dry. While that dries, we're going to come in with our two purples. I'm nearly out of this color. Oh, right, nearly out, meaning explosion. Okay. Don't know why that happened. We'll just spread him out though. Wow, there is a lot there. One minute. Let's come and get up the extra. I don't know why that happened. Anyway, it's safe to say we fixed that problem. some darker purple So that's that so far. And what we need to do. So we're just going to tip out a little bit of yellow. Squeeze in a little bit of yellow. There we are.
And then let's draw this real quick. And come in. Do some circles. Yeah. And then just go and grab a little bit of this blue. And do like three of these chicken white ones here. And three of these chicken white ones here. Another three up here. I'm going to grab a stamp and actually line it with the same willowy type paint. And let's stamp it in some areas. So if you want a specific spot with your love hearts, you can always look through the gap bit there. That's clear. I know it has engraved text, but you can still kind of see where you're stamping. Probably need about three of these. Right. And then just quickly heat these ones. We're not heating the glossy accent ones. Um, if we heat them, they might accidentally get bubbles in them, and we're trying to like completely let them dry fully. just coming in this is partially still a little bit wet so we're using Timmy's I'm being very careful not to rip the paper
Come on, cut this one. I did stamp these two a little bit close. A little bit to that. And then last but not least. There we go. So we've got our four. Let's come in with some. So these are what our four look like so far. And we're just going to come in. little bit of this fleshy color There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I just realized you couldn't see that. Right, and then I'm going to come in. Once again, we're going with the wet paint. Let's change tact a little bit. Draw a few. Small hearts on our hearts. And then, so there are our little hearts. Oh, hello, Margaret. Oh, hello. It was lovely meeting you too. Yes, the heart step is very good, isn't it? Um, 
So let's come on and place him down, place them down a few spots. So before we stick these on, our glossy accent on our page is dry. So we're going to come and do the next step here. I'm just going to grab our watercolours wherever I dumped my watercolours. Found them. I cleaned my desk up. Couldn't find anything after that. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to come in. And I think this will work. Grab this darker blue colour here. Okay. Put a little bit on and spread. Put a bit more water on. Let it create the resistance. Okay. And oh my god, it's working. Okay, and then we're going to come over here. Do a similar thing, but add water. Nearly working.
don't know if this corner was quite as successful as the top one there, but like you can still see where some of the heart is, some of the hearts there are. Just add a little bit of watercolor there. Come and heat that. So we just want this to be dry. And then let's decide where our hearts are going to go. So I feel like if one goes there, and I'll possibly here. really nice let's just come in and we're gonna put some white down behind where we want our heart to go oh no we're not gonna stick our heart down with this white step so we're gonna make sure it can pop and then with even less white on Turn that one. Just it's on like a little bit of the texture of the glossy accent heart. Just to help us really form where they were. Now be prepared, the white is going to mix with the watercolour underneath if you are doing it in spots where you've just put watercolour. So don't get really worried when it starts to mix. Just reload the finger and add some more. Come and add these ones in now. And then these up I'm going to stick them down with gel medium now because I'm happy where they are there we go and while the wet paint is still wet the white paint is still wet 
the wet paint is still wet, of course the wet paint is still wet. While the white paint is still wet, we don't actually have to put any gel medium on the page to make our sandwich effect. We can just come in and stick them down and I'll lift this up after we do this step. I think we're only going to put three on. I'll leave number four for a later point. And we've got this extra bit here where we can come in and create a few more hearts out of that. And then, so we've got those ones. Now, I'm just going to come and wipe. white and a few spots just to match the lavender and the watercolor that we've already pre-done And now, let's come and see how our bubble ones look. So, they're not 100% dry. Okay, so get them dry enough to actually do this technique. I've had to heat them, which means they are quite textured now, um, but hopefully it still works. They're not going to be like a um, flat, glossy layer. They're going to be really textured. I was looking for the scissors. They were at my eye height, which is a bit dangerous. Okay, so we're just going to come in. I'm going to cut this row off first. And I don't know if I'm actually going to come and use these. are like the flat ones. They don't look very interesting compared to our bubbly one. Let's see how it looks once we cut them out. It's like one heart there. Oh, 
Hold up. And if we just do two of these. They're quite interesting, you just can't see them yet. So let's stick them down. And then we'll get into the seeing bit. So happy enough, the technique does work. Because it's been the, the vellum's been sealed. So the vellum doesn't curl. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So one part of this does work. Woo! It is a bit crinkled on the back, but you can't actually tell once you cut the shape out. Which I think is a win, personally. Like it's as close as we're going to get to a win with vellum, not crinkling, when adding glue. Okay, and then... Let's come in. And first we're just going to rub a little bit of the flesh color over the texture because they are very textured. And then if we grab and then I think that shows up heart really well. Now let's come and do this one. Thank you, Cheryl. And then so I'm quite happy with that. Now well, before we finish, I do think what we need to do is, is just come in with our teeny paintbrush again. 
with our white. Just come and do some very non-symmetrical circles. And then I think we might be almost done. I reckon. Let me lift it up so they can see all the different bits now. So that's like our bubble heart there. You can't really see the bubble vellum anymore, but you can see through the heart, which I think is pretty cool. And it didn't crinkle. So all one is there. The only reason why you can't see the bubble pattern is because we had to heat to it to dry it to get it finished. But it has that really cool texture to it now, which is what that flesh is showing. So I do like it. I think it is done. Does anyone think it needs anything else? Well, thank you, Diane. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I think that might be us done for the night. I'm going to go and build the mixed media bundle for tonight. Um, thank you all for coming. We will be back tomorrow night for our Friday night live uh, where Mum's using Snow Princess again because we're doing a bit of a princess week. Uh, and, yeah, I think I'm subscribing for that one tomorrow. And, um, yeah, but thank you all for coming, and we shall see you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Have a great night. Oh, my phone's moved. Oh, dear. Bye.